Let's stay on this issue of the vaccine, though, and cross to Adelaide and catch up with Professor Nikolai Petrovsky. Thanks for joining us, uh, Nikolai. I really appreciate it. Uh, I saw your interview last night uh, on this station with Sherry Markson, and you are all over the newspapers today with uh, your intrepid search for a vaccine also turning up information that you say shows this vaccine could have been produced in a laboratory rather than have uh, just transferred naturally in a wet, wet market? Well, no, that, that isn't quite what we said. We, we said that we have to consider the possibility that this virus may have come out of a laboratory. Uh, we can't just assume it came from a wild animal. As At the moment, we have no proof of either possibility, so it needs to be addressed. Yeah, precisely. And you were saying that it's a possibility. I, uh, as I said, I, I never, you, you were very clear that you're, not say, you're saying it was likely, but you're saying yeah. it's a possibility. Now, what we've yeah. had, heard from others previously is that there's no way this could be the case. You've looked at certain aspects of the virus that suggest that it's a, that it's a possibility. It gets to the, this point of the investigation and why it's so important. Tell us why you think the investigation of the origins of the virus uh, is so important and important that it happens quickly? So the reason that, you know, we always try to find the source of a virus is if, if there's another similar virus out there that we're not aware of, you know, it may be the cause of the next pandemic in a year's time. So we may get through this one crisis and who's to say we won't be hit with another one. So it's absolutely essential that we get to the bottom of where did this virus come from? You know, what are its origins? And, you know, is it out there in some wild animal population which we don't know about? Or could it have come, you know, accidentally uh, from a laboratory experiment? We, we need to know that. Now, tell us what goes on in laboratories where you're looking at these viruses and looking at, at vaccines. Is it, it, presumably, it's quite easy, given the work you do, to actually alter some of the characteristics of a virus? Yes, well, well, Gene, you know, we, we, we now have incredible technology. Um, so we can create synthetic genes, we can create synthetic viruses, and, in fact, you know, lots of companies around the world are doing that for something we call gene therapy. Um, a lot of those gene therapies are actually human-created viruses that we deliberately infect people with to change their genetic makeup. So the, the technology is absolutely, you know, there in, in most labs around the world now to, to do these sorts of, of studies. But obviously we're tightly regulated, uh, particularly in Australia, as to what we can do. We have to get approval and we have to, to do a risk assessment uh, before we ever handle a virus or manipulate a virus. So, so that, that's where the safeguards come into play. Yeah, well, uh, your comments uh, and your research uh, and this whole issue was put to the Federal Health Minister, Greg Hunt, today, and here's what he had to say uh, about an international independent investigation. But this is precisely why, precisely why we argued for uh, an impartial and independent and comprehensive international evaluation and why I think the result of the World Health Assembly last week, a unanimous decision, co-sponsored by 137 countries, Australia and the EU working together was so important. Greg Hunt there earlier today. Uh, Nikolai Petrovsky, uh, does it worry you that this is really just about the facts, right? You, you are interested yes. in the facts of this virus and finding a vaccine for it. Yet, of course, this plays into a whole US versus China global scenario about whether it was from a lab or a wet market. Uh, and we just want to know the truth. That, I, I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, as scientists, it's not for us to sort of pursue p political agendas, but we have, we, you know, our job is to find the facts. And, and at the moment, you know, we simply haven't got those facts in front of us and, and we need to, to know. So I think, uh, you know, certainly an inquir a scientific inquiry that is, is not aimed at finger pointing, but what, but gets to the truth as far as we can is is essential. And the earlier it happens, the better, because, you know, again, the trace will go, go dim. Um, even if we're looking for it in a wild animal, you know, uh, that isn't a, a stable situation. It, it, you know, the longer we leave it, the harder it will be to find out exactly where this virus came from.
So I suppose you knew once you decided to go public and say that you can't rule out uh, this being created in a lab, that this is one of the possibilities that needs to be uh, still investigated on the evidence available to you now, looking at the characteristics of the virus. You knew that this is likely to be very controversial. People are seized on this in, in the geostrategic world. So we did, and with my colleagues, because, again, it wasn't just, you know, our group here. We were collaborating uh, with uh, Professor David Winkler from, from La Trobe University in Victoria. You know, we had long and detailed discussions about just how we manage this information. Obviously, our, our research was, was worrying, the, you know, what we found. It wasn't the reason we started doing the research in the first place. But when you, you find these facts that don't seem to fit what people are saying, then then you, you're obliged to, to make them public somehow, but at the same time, try and keep the politics out of it. Really just say, here's the science, this is what we found, this virus is amazingly adapted to humans, and that's not normal in a situation where a virus has come from a wild animal to a human. Typically, it takes a while for that virus to adjust to a human environment. This virus was clearly you know, perfectly adapted to humans from day one. And, and that's, that's a little bit unusual. It's a little bit hard to explain, but it could still be a natural experiment that, that nature has thrown upon us. So, so hence why we can't say any possibility is in or out. We just have to say they're all still possibilities that need to be addressed. Yeah, well, you've put that into the uh, public arena and we're indebted to you for that because we all want to know the facts here. Just finally, then, you're part of a, a team trying to get up a vaccine. Uh, there are other teams in Australia and around the world. About 100, uh, Jane Holton just told us, o over 100. Are we likely to get a number of different vaccines around the world competing for effectiveness or is it about somebody hitting on the jackpot first? No, look, I, we're, we're hopeful that there will be plenty of vaccines that are successful because the, the world's a big place and we're going to need an awful lot of vaccines uh, and people like choices. So it's, it's like we have lots of blood pressure drugs. You know, there's not just one. Similarly, when, you, when you're developing vaccines, it's not, you know, necessarily that there will just be one success and everything else will, uh, you know, fail. So, you know, we have obviously put a lot of effort into making sure our vaccine is a success. We are, we've, we've got supporting animal data. Um, you know, we've used it before for swine flu, for, for bird flu. Uh, we, we used it for SARS, although that, that was tested in animals and successful, but didn't go to humans. So we've had like about 18 years of experience doing this, you know, uh, basically taking vaccines into humans against all sorts of pandemics. So that's why we're confident. Uh, obviously, a lot of the other technologies that are being proposed have never been tested in humans before. Uh, so they're very experimental, and that means the risks that they won't work or there'll be a problem are, are much higher. So, But we're still very hopeful that it won't be just our vaccine. There'll be multiple vaccines that are successful, because that's what the world needs.